labor inspectors are appointed by the Department of Labor and can visit your premises at any time to ensure compliance with relevant labor legislation. Now, previously, employers had a grace period to rectify non-compliance, but the grace period fell away with amendments to the basic conditions of the Employment Act effective from December 2014. Well, the labor inspectors can now immediately issue a compliance order. So, for a status on whether companies are complying, uh, we are joined now by Egi Moilwa from the Department of Employment and Labor. Ms. Moilwa, thank you very much for your time. Let's begin with uh, some of the companies that have fallen foul of the department that you are attached to and for what reasons are they seen as having violated this country's labor laws? Thanks for having me. Uh, um, I take it that you're focusing on what is happening in Gauteng currently. We started with mega police inspections uh, on Monday. Uh, they're still going on even as we speak. To, to date, we've done about 12 companies. We, we also also checking um, compliance with immigration uh, as well as Employment Services Act. And in terms of foreign nationals that were found in this space, we found that there were 209. Out of those 209, probably 36 were, um, did not, did, were undocumented and they were therefore arrested on the spot, including three employers. You asked what laws are being violated. Every single law of the Department of Employment and Labor is being violated. Yeah. Starting from, yeah, starting from the Occupational Health and Safety Act, where you find that all the companies that we've been to thus far really do not have a viable health and safety system. I missed the part about the arrests that occurred. Could you just repeat that for us? Who was arrested and for what reason? 36 people were arrested. They were arrest arrested by the immigration agents of the Department of Home Affairs. Out of that 36, three were employers. The rest were workers that were in the country, the foreign nationals, that were in the country illegally, and uh, all of them were undocumented. And what penalties could the company, for example, where you would have found a foreign national in the employ of that company, however, uh, they did not have the necessary documentation to be in this country legally, uh, what are the penalties for that company? We've got um, different penalties that are effective uh, in, in, in both departments. For instance, in the space of the Immigration Act, the law says for every one undocumented worker, the employer is liable for 25,000. I mean, 2,500, sorry, not 25,000. 2,500. Okay. Yeah. So, so yeah. that's the penalty on the part of the employer. What about the employee? Is that person then to be deported? They are to be deported because clearly they, they, they wouldn't have the documents that allow them to be in the country. So they will be in the country illegally. So and that's what would happen. As far as immigration is concerned, Ms. Moila, you will know that this has been an ongoing national discourse or national discussion or debate, whichever you choose, mm -hmm. how, how, how is that space at the moment? How big is the incidence or are incidences of people being in this country illegally or employers, as you say, 36 people arrested and three of those are actual employers. Yeah. How big are these violations? Or how widespread, perhaps I should say? They are quite pervasive. We get a sense that uh, what we've done so far is literally having scratched the tip of an iceberg. Um, until recently, we haven't really had uh, a very focused program in terms of the two departments coming together. Because we have a dual mandate to play in this space. 
whilst um, most of our laws are towards um, regulating the working conditions and the working environment. However, we do have a role to play in so far as the employment of uh, foreign nationals is concerned. And one of the very conscious decisions that we took was that it was long overdue mm. that we should come together and really begin to make some shockwaves and um, just a, a con concert our efforts and come up with a coordinated approach. And it is an approach that is we are applying throughout uh, the country. So you ask how widespread is it? It's quite widespread. And actually, um, you know, employers uh, have even mastered how to, to dodge the system because they do conceal these workers, so it's very difficult to get them. So you've got to have your intelligence on par and you've got to be able to have your strategy on par as well to be able to, to deal with this mammoth problem. Very, very briefly, I'm out of time. If people want to get a hold of an inspector from your department, how do they get a hold of you? Uh, on the website, we've got details uh, of various provincial chief inspectors and specialist inspectors. We also have labor centers and labor offices throughout the length and breadth of the country. In every single major town, we've got uh, a presence where we don't have daily um, offices that operate on a daily basis. We've got um, a satellite offices. So we are quite accessible, I believe. All right. Egi Moilwa, thank you very much for your time. Uh, Inspector General at the Department of Employment and Labor, had we had more time for this conversation, you and I would have had to get into fisticuffs about why it's taken so long for these blitz to happen and filling that space are organizations that you are well aware of, which have taken it upon themselves to basically monitor these companies. But thank you for your time uh, for today.